Hey, 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 everybody. Michelle is here on this Friday. It is Friday, June the 28th, 2024. And I just finished doing me a little quick walk around the block, you know, because I do uh, a lot of movement kind of things, but in a slower pace. And what do I mean by that? I walk instead of running. That's just, that, you know, that's what I do. I don't like to run because I feel I feel like that's putting a lot of damage on my my body and on my structure by running. So I just casually walk, you know. And when I'm walking, I do my walking meditation, meaning I'm just completely present in what I'm doing, um, paying attention to every you know as many parts of my body as I can as I'm walking and how how I'm stepping and all that what the sun feels like on my skin it's intensely hot out there you know as i expect it would be you know because we're we're kind of like in the uh in the throes of how warm it can be you know where i am now which is essentially in the desert so to speak so i'm here uh you know just doing what i can to keep myself healthy in these conditions and you know and not be extreme about it be fanatical and and just carrying on about it as if you know you know it's just and making it more than it is uh we really really need to if we choose to is to get over the myths of things that we have about our lives there's a lot of myths going on and what are myths well let's look it up why don't we how about that Let's see what what um what is, what are, what are myths? <clears throat> it says a genre, a folklore consisting consisting primarily of narratives that play a fundamental role in a society. Okay. Um, what well, that's not really saying much to me. Okay, let's see what else it has going on here. I'm trying to get organized. And, Comfortable. <laughs> Let's see what else it says here about myths. Um, okay, it has a religious and secular endorsement. Okay, that explains it. You know, it explains a lot to me. Um, Because uh, again, everything's being commercialized, everything has been commercialized, and everything's made to believe in something that doesn't exist, but yet using, attempting to use metaphors for something that doesn't exist. And sometimes that can be kind of tricky and, and kind of crazy making as well, because usually with the metaphor, you're attempting to enforce what is true necessarily or which is more logical and rational and reasonable, right? But if you're attempting to push a myth on something that doesn't exist, that's crazy making, okay? And in my opinion, when you incorporate religion in, into a uh, in, into myths, uh, it just c creates a bit of, um, you know, it, it creates a little bit of, uh, you know, confusion in my opinion. Um, myths, you know, myths, in my opinion, uh, let's see, I mean, it goes, it has a whole lot of related terms that goes with it, but, um, you know, it has here a myth of stories of the gods, a religious accounts of the beginning of the world, the creation, the fundamental events, and blah, blah, blah. So... There's a lot of um, misperceived mis um, perceptions about the beginning of this planet, the beginning of our existence. And so because, of, because a lot of people just really don't know too much about, really don't know what's really true or not, we just create a whole lot of, you know, uh, collection of things and and... They have no basis in fact, none whatsoever. So we're, we're attempting to 
just confuse the matter even more and, and pile on more irrelevancy than necessary, you know. And a lot of people just cannot, cannot see things from outside of themselves. Meaning, I said this a long time ago, we gather knowledge, we gather information from the outside, we internalize it, and then we recycle it out as whatever it needs to be. Okay, in some cases it's in, in the form of experiences, events, situations that we, we find ourselves in. Okay, I told you nature is a perfect example of how we as human, in the human form, ought to behave and act as well. You know, we have a, we, there's a there's, there is a reason for what we do, but we have to be reasonable about it. Okay, so a lot of people base their lives on supernatural uh they base their lives on uh on on characters that do not exist and never have exist but they're laying their life on the line for this these myths they know they're myths like gods we know that they're myths but a lot of people lay their lives on the line for for myths and they wonder why they're suffering so much unnecessarily mm, excuse me so when I was out there walking, that's what I do. Usually, you know, I'm just I'm just contemplating in my head, thinking, uh, attempting to figure out, you know, how to best utilize what I'm attempting to do versus what everybody else is doing. There's a lot, a lot of people with narratives. Fantastic to me, okay? There's a lot of people with their theories and opinions. All of us ought to be able to cultivate and and, and conjure up some type of uh, uh, theories and opinions <clears throat> and not play this high ground, which is completely low that, um, you know, I know nothing or, you know, I'm going to leave it up to God or, you know, um, only God knows. And, you know, all this, all this is myth. You're talking in myths, but yet you're taking that all literally. Okay. You understand me? You're talking in myths which are not necessarily true or not necessarily existing, but you're creating it, you're talking as if they, they do exist and they do, they are real. So a lot of people are going to get all upset. I know it and I can feel it and sense it and receive it. When, when everything is shattered, you know, their, their smoke and mirrors are shattered, literally, or their theories and opinions are shattered, you know, because they're not, because you're not, allowing because you know you put out the theories and opinions but instead of uh being more reflective of it and grounding it in reality and asking yourself in a gentle and kind fashion why do i believe that this this that gods exist why do i believe lord the, that lords exist you know if that's a solid foundation for you you have no issues questioning it none whatsoever you will not get offended by that if someone asks you, okay, why do you believe in God? Okay, why do you believe in uh, uh, Jesus? Why do you believe in, uh, you know, Christopher Columbus? Why do you believe in this and that and the other? If you're, so if you're solid in your foundation and you've uh, done everything in your power to cultivate, contemplate, properly meditate, properly ruminate about your beliefs and, and this and that and the other, your myths, your folklore, all that, then you are comfortable with it being questioned. I told you I'm a storyteller, and I told you what storytellers do. Sometimes they embellish stuff. Sometimes they, you know, sometimes there's facts, or they, and in other words, there's uh, truth, and then there's untruth. But that's the part of, that's the, the great part of thinking it through and allowing your consciousness to bring into the experiences to know so that you'll know what's, real and was not was fantasy and delusion and hallucination the power of your thoughts can send you in prison for the rest of your life or have you out free as a bird to do whatever you want to do and that can be literally figuratively and metaphorically okay a lot of people are prisoners of their own thoughts okay when but they are not behind necessarily a literal prison 
they, they, you know, they, they, the prison is their thoughts and what they're thinking about and why they can't come out of these trances of, of, of these uh, myths that we have created into literal entities, you know, and, and, and driving ourselves insane in, 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 in the process. So many of us are having some, some difficult times in our lives. We're losing loved ones because, you know, we're at an age. I'm, at, I'm almost 60, so I'm, I'm not delusional to know that, you know, uh, I'm going to lose relatives at some point in time because, you know, that's just a factor of life. Uh, and that's the, you know, that's the, that's the natural part of life. You're going to be passing. You're going to be becoming, be, being born, and you're going to be passing, passing away. And then the cycle, a cycle of life continues. A cycle of life and death continues in your lineage, in your ancestry, whatever you want to call it. No, nothing actually dies. Uh, that's just words we use. Life continues on and on and on and on and on. That's how you pass the baton. You pass the baton. I've talked about that enough. So a lot of us are going to be experiencing a lot of devastation and heartache because we're going to lose loved ones. Uh, there's going to be events happening financially. There's going to be events happening with the climates, the climate destruction. And so in each, in, 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 in each of those moments, your theories and opinions will be put to the test. Okay? Wouldn't somebody that is supposed to save you be, have been here by now? How is this person supposed to show up in your life? What are they going to look like? What are they going to sound like? You know, because all of your sensing has to be involved when this so-called, you know, savior is supposed to save you. You know, will I see this savior? Will others see this savior that's supposed to come and, and save us? And so we got a lot of people who want to be those saviors. You know, everybody's given their narratives. I, I you know, because I, I appreciate it because I know I have the free will to move on. I don't have to sit there and listen to it if I don't want to. That's the part I like. Unfortunately, when you have television programming, sometimes you, you don't have a choice as to what you watch. Okay, on certain platforms, uh, you can. Streaming service was, you know, I thought was fantastic in the beginning, but now it's doing, it's acting the same way as cable TV, if anybody's paying attention. And I'm sure the social media platforms are going to follow suit. That's what we do. We're followers. We're not leaders. Some some will, you know, show their beautiful heads as as appropriate leaders, but most of the time they get, you know, they get pushed. They you know they get pushed down, pushed down, because nobody is allowed to elevate themselves into these pyramid styles of leadership on purpose. So a lot of people are going around complaining about nepotism, favoritism. Which is, you know, it's the same thing. Nepotism is nothing more, nothing less than favoritism. Okay. Nepotism um, is a way of stagnating growth, in my opinion. Um, because, because you are not bringing in fresh blood. You know, and that's, a li that's a figuratively, metaphorically. A lot of people was taking that literally. That's why I say a lot of people do not un know how to discern uh, metaphors and, and, and being fig figuratively and, and being sy symbolic. We take everything literal. You know. You need to bring in fresh ideas of people. Fresh talent. Fresh. Freshness of. Of uh, theories and opinions. Freshness of ideas. In order to. 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 Uh, have a, a. A natural flow of energy instead of having things constricted and stopped nepotism in my opinion stops growth it stops um, uh, progression okay yes you know uh, and I think the argument was you know I mean because nepotism has been going on for thousands of years and has anybody been complaining about it but as soon as you know these these athletes uh, who have been, been participating in nepotism is for a while. As soon as athletes come in and and wanna wanna also participate in nepotism, okay, now it's a problem. But it's not a problem in politics. It's not a problem in law enforcement. It's not a problem 
in other branches of government where nepotism rules. Okay, we might as well call nepotism what we have now as far as these candidates from all walks of life. I mean, from all walks of uh, positions, not walks of life, because that's what we fail to 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 tap into is all walks of life. We stick we stick with the same breed pedigree. That's it. Okay, so it just it, a lot of it. I but the the, the thing is, that I don't I don't necessarily. Uh, pick up that people are concerned about nepotism because nepotism has been going on for thousands of years. I think there's a lot of jealousy and envy coded in and coded in that as well, encoded into that as well. There's a lot of jealousy and envy. Okay, because you know, um, because of the, because of some of these, some, like as far as the athletes are concerned, as long as you bring in that certain level and caliber of athletes, certain people will never get an opportunity, and they know that. They know their children will never get an opportunity because a lot of these athletes, now we know who they are, are elite athletes, you know, uh, uh, their body structure is uh, unmatchable with other races of people and, 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 pe and, and a lot of people see that. So it's more so to me jealousy, okay? If you can't handle the, the nepotism in sports and entertainment, well, do something about it in the entities of politics, the entities of government, okay, the entities of law enforcement. If you want to tackle and have an issue with nepotism, start there. Why sports and entertainment? Deal with nepotism in politics because our taxpayers' money is at stake and being used for that purposes to keep it status quo, to keep certain people in that in those positions. And they're not, they, they're not, they can care less about the American people. Again, politics is not about the American people at all. It's about a certain level of nepotism, a certain level of favoritism, pedigree, okay? And that's how it's been for thousands of years. So, so let's go after the athletes, right? Yeah, because that's, they're the ones that get, are getting more attention in, in, in politics. So let's go after the athlete. Let's create these narratives. Let's bring up some dirt that they may have known about these athletes for for years. But now let's go ahead and bring it up, bring it up, and you know, and create more distraction about the about this 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 show ponies of politics, you know, that are, that are embarrassing. So let's let's pick on the athletes, which are usually. Uh, non-white okay let's pick on the entertainers which again are usually non-white and not focus on you know um, and, and, and so that we don't have to be concerned about the travesty that the, the, the disasters the you know the catastrophes that we have in politics which is in alignment with our climate destruction so that's my theories and opinions on stuff that's going on and how we are we need to deal with the myths we have about certain realities that we expect you know we we are rolling around in garbage in our thoughts about what's actually important to us you know we ought to have not gotten to this point where athletes and entertainments had all this this prestige well they do Okay, but it's 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 what they look like. It's what the issue is. At the end of the day, they do not look like. Sometimes they don't look like you. They don't look like I. They don't look like us. Peace and love, and trust me, I will be back.